dance floor as you can hear what he has to say. He's his dance floor and he thinks the world is all over. Net fans, Nets boy here bringing you latest in your Brooklyn Nets news. Okay, well, the Nets are 18 and 32. Um, once again, the inconsistency factor of this team is the cause of their downfall. Uh, you know, after two really good wins against the Pistons and the Heat, they have just lost three straight, a close game against the Thunder, but then two basically blowouts against the um, Bucks. And then the Timberwolves. And, you know, once again, this team's inconsistency, the fact that they can't play the same every single game and, and they can't get the same contributions from the same players every given night is once again a factor of why this team is 18 and 32. But this episode's not about that. This episode is uh, about the possible trades that the Nets might make from the, with the trade deadline right around the corner. Trade deadline is uh, February 8th, I believe, either the 6th or the 8th, one of those two days um, coming up. So it's less than a week away. Well, a little over a week away, actually. And the Nets have been linked to a couple rumors out there. Um, and so we're just going to dive right in. I'm going to talk about some of the rumors and some of the things maybe that maybe I would like to see. Uh, I do this every year for the last five years or four years. I don't remember how long I've been doing this now, either three or four years I've been doing that these Nets boys. Every year I always have an episode about the trades and some of the moves I think the Nets should make. Um, but this year is different because this year, I'm going to be honest, there's not really any player that I think the Nets should get. Um, you know, uh, at least not a, a player that I believe is available for them to get. Um, you know, this year is different than all the other years because... I'm not in this whole, like, the Nets need to win now mode, like I've been in the past, where I've said, like, the Nets need to get bring in some players and, and be a competitive team. I think this Nets team has a has a nice blueprint of what they've been doing, and I can see what Sean Marks' strategy is, and I, I, I like it. Um, that being said, I think that we have to look at the bigger picture and see what could this Nets team do. What is Marks' goal at this come this trade deadline and i think the goal is going to be for him to acquire more future assets whether it's a young player or more likely some more draft picks because the nets need picks still they're still in the same boat so uh, but i've listened i've been reading a lot of rumors i've been reading about a lot of players and possibilities of, of players that the nets could be trading um on their team um some of them make sense to me and some of them don't but there seems to be a, a, a common consensus that Joe Harris is the most likely net to be traded. Now, I said this last episode, I love Joe Harris. I think that he's a key piece for this team in the future. He's 26 years old. It's not like he's old. I think that you could easily sign him to a three-year deal. Uh, he's a free agent at the end of this year, so he signed him to a three-year deal and pay him respectively. And I think he could be a key piece for this team moving forward in the slow development to go from an average mediocre team that they are now to maybe a playoff contending team. Um, the idea behind the, that training, uh, Joe Harris is simple. Like I said, he's a free agent, so he's going to get a lot of offers and he's going to get offers. He's going to get paid this off season. That's the first reason. And the second reason is he is at an all time high value wise. Um, you know, he's averaging over 12 points a game, shooting over 54% from three the last 10 games. He's just looked really, really good. He's proven that he's an all-around player. And similar to the way that what the Nets did with Boran Boganovich last year, and they traded him to a contending team to get a, a, a late first-round draft pick, I think the Nets could do the same for Joe Harris. Does that mean I want the Nets to trade Joe Harris? No. But I completely understand the logic behind it. And I think there are teams out there, playoff, caliber teams or championship aspiration teams that need another wing player who can shoot the three ball and can come off the bench and be efficient. I can see a team uh, like the Cavaliers. We, they're a team that's struggling a lot and they need to make some moves or maybe even the Raptors um, or even the team like the Celtics who might want another player to boost their team or, or, or you know, the Spurs. The Spurs are a team that maybe they could use a little bit more. You know, teams along those lines I can see them giving up a, a late first-round draft pick in order to obtain Joe Harris. And so, I don't know. I, I see it happening. I don't know if it will, 
I personally don't want it to happen, but that's something I see. So Joe Harris's name has been floating out there, as well as Damari Carroll's name. Damari Carroll has played very well this year as well. And I'm going to be honest, of all the players I feel like the Nets should trade or could trade, I think Damari Carroll makes the most sense. Look, I also really like Damari Carroll. I think he's that played fantastic for the Nets this year. You know, he's been the veteran leader on that team. He's 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 been very good defensively and knocking threes down and being an overall complete player. But I also get it. Look, he's still got a big contract. He still signs all through next season, you know, and you want to maybe shed one of the contracts you brought on to bring in those assets that Sean Marks did earlier this year. You know, he brought on the back contract to bring in some assets. So maybe if you can now shed one of those contracts or two and still get something in return for it, I would do it. I, I would. Um, where would Tamara Carroll go? Well, he's been linked to the Cavaliers. You know, someone talked the Nets. They're talking about maybe Amon Shumpert and 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 uh, and Shannon Fry for um, Damari Carroll. That was something that was brought up there. Uh, I, you know, it works contractually. Shannon Fry is a free agent. Shumpert has a play as a team option, so the Nets can, you know, let him go at the end of the year. So you get out of the contracts. You know, those are still veterans to replace the veteran leadership of, of Damari Carroll. That's not a bad move. Um, you know, it doesn't really help the Nets, uh, you know, right now. Uh, you know, uh, Shumpert is an average wing player at best right now, and so is Shannon Fry. And, but at the same time, it, what it does is help him in the future. It sheds him off a contract. And look, Damari Carroll is not part of the future of this Nets team. He's not. He's, he was a player that the Nets brought in to be a veteran leader, as well as to bring in another draft pick that the Nets got. So I can see that being a move that could be done. Um, you know, uh, that being said, maybe the Nets won't trade Carroll, and I, I don't know, but that's something that I think they could possibly do. And then the other player that has been trade, that been linked to trades is Spencer Dinwiddie. Now, there's a lot of teams, once again, including the Cavs, that are very, very interested in Spencer Dinwiddie because of how he's played this year. And he's on a very, very courteous contract. It's not even a guaranteed contract, by the way. It's like, what is it, like one point something million dollars, not even guaranteed. So it's like the best contract you can get for that player of his, of his caliber. I've read and heard a lot of teams have been reaching out to the Nets asking about Dinwiddie. And I'm going to be honest, if I'm the Nets, I am not trading Spencer Dinwiddie. I don't, unless there's, there's a great package that gets put together that you have to, like, say, like, wow, like, I, you know what, I have to do this. You know, uh, I'm not getting rid of Dinwiddie. I, I think Spencer Dinwiddie has proven that, look, Spencer Dinwiddie is not going to become a superstar. He's not going to become a star player. He's really, I don't believe, going to be much better than what he is now. I think he can get a little bit better, a little bit more consistent. But I think he's not going to be much better than what he is. But he is a key player on this Nets team. Not just now, but for the future. I think the, him, the backcourt of him and D'Angelo Russell is the backcourt of the future for this Nets team. I think Dinwiddie's ability to play both the one and the two and the fact that Russell can also play the one and the two just makes that combination great. And I know it's the same idea the Nets had at the beginning of the year with Jeremy Lin and and uh, and, and D'Angelo Russell. The same type of thing that they were expecting there, I think you're seeing now with Dinwiddie and Russell. So I like Dinwiddie. I think that he fits the mold better for this team. Uh, you know, it's so funny because we all remember – well, I think a lot of you remember earlier on last year, who the hell is Spencer Dinwiddie and how much I didn't care for the guy at all. And now I'm saying you can't get rid of him at all at, at any cost. But, you know, I think he's a key piece to this Nets team in the future. I, I really do. I, I think he's, he's like I said, he's not going to be a star, but he's always going to be a really good point guard. And I think that's something that the Nets should hold on to. Um, and, but then again, if they get offered something great, you know, who knows, you know, and I've heard that teams, once again, like the Cavaliers might be willing to trade Kevin Love or, or, or even, um, Isaiah Thomas for Dinwiddie and like Damari Carroll. That, that was the one, the last one I heard. I heard Kevin Love for Spencer Dinwiddie, Damari Carroll and Timothy Mozgov, which means the Nets would bring in a potential star player in Love who, you know, we know who, who he is, you know, he's a 20 and 10 player on most teams when he's not playing behind, you know, LeBron James. He's a 20-10 and 10 player and a really 
focal point of a team. I've heard something that the Nets, that, that, that the Cavs might trade him to bring in Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, uh, um, Damari Carroll, and then Timothy Mozgov just to solidify the contracts. I, I don't know. I Look, Kevin Love is not a young guy anymore. You know, he's, he's 20, I think he's 28 years old as well, 29, 28 years old. So he's not like he's, you know, got is going to get better. I think he is what he is. I think, you know, I don't know. Just It doesn't fit to me what Sean Marks is trying to do with the Nets, which is create a young core to build upon. So I don't see that happening. I don't even know if I really want that to happen because I don't really know how good Kevin Love will actually be. So, look, when it's all said and done, the only player I personally think makes sense to trade is Damari Carroll, and that's if you get a draft pick for him. I understand them trading Joe Harris and they get a draft pick. Um, personally, I'll tell you the one player that I would trade, I would trade uh, Tyler Zeller and, and see what you can get for him. I don't know a team that really needs a solid rotational big, but I've said this before, I think Jaheel Okafor and Jared Allen are the two centers of the future for this that's team, and they need to get the blunt of the playing time and as good as Tyler Zeller has played, I think that he is uh, expendable at this point. And I think you could get a second-round draft pick or two for him, maybe swapping another type of player for him, something like that. Uh, you know, Isaiah Whitehead is somebody that I wouldn't be surprised gets traded. As much as we know I love Isaiah Whitehead being he's a Seton Hall player, um, Seton, you know, Seton Hall alum like me. But he's kind of expendable as well. And personally, I feel like of all the young kids – you know, the young players the Nets have, I think Karis LeVert makes the most sense to be traded. And I know that shocks everyone. He's the one player I know the Nets have said they're not going to trade. Because even Ronda House Jefferson's name has been linked out there to some possible trade rumors. And once again, the Cavs. The Cavs keep on coming up because the Cavs need a lot. But he's someone else. But in my personal opinion, the player I feel like you could get the most back of this young Corks. They're not going to trade D'Angelo Russell. Um... Of all the young players the Nets have, I think Karis LeVert just makes the most sense. I think LeVert has proven that he is a good player and has a lot of potential. But he, in my opinion, he still doesn't fit unless he has the ball in his hands. We've seen the inconsistency of Karis LeVert when he's playing off the ball. But we saw how good he was when he plays on the ball. When he plays with the ball in his hands. You know, just when, you know, when D'Angelo Russell got hurt. So maybe that goes with the whole trade Dinwiddie idea because that Karis LeVert could do what Dinwiddie does. But I would rather keep Dinwiddie and trade LeVert. And I also think you can get more from LeVert because I think LeVert has a higher ceiling. And I think you could put Karis LeVert and get two first-round draft picks back for him. I, I really do. For some team that really thinks he's a young core, core player. But, but I don't know. I, I I don't. I read that he's the one player the Nets are not going to trade, and yet he's the one player of the young kids that I think they could, they should trade. Um, but you, I'm gonna be honest, anything could happen for the Nets at this trade deadline. Um, but so I can't even make a prediction. You know, I, I really can't. All I know is the team has to play more consistent and consistently, and um, you know we'll see what happens moving forward. Uh, so let me know what you guys think of some of the moves. You think the Nets should make players that the Nets should maybe trade for, players that you think that they should trade away, what they think they could get for certain players. See if you agree with me, disagree. Um, either way, I believe the Nets will make a move of some sort. I, I mean, they already made a move earlier on, obviously, to get Gio Loco for. But I think they got one, Sean Marks got one more trade in his sleeve that he's going to do to try to acquire another draft pick, whether it's a late first round or early second round draft pick. I see the Nets doing that. So let me know what you think. And until the next time, this is, um, this is Nets boy possibly going to the Lakers game this coming Friday. Uh, I haven't bought my tickets yet. I'm trying to go because I want to see Brooke Lopez. But I have some things going on that I may not be able to do, but I'm trying to do it. So if you see me there, say hello. If not, keep your eyes open for the next Nets Boy episode. might be in a couple weeks. I'll probably do an episode right after the trade deadline to go over if the Nets made any moves. So until then, this is Nets Boy. Signing off. Well, the Nets just can't